Well, good afternoon. This is Dave Jones with Storm Center Communications and Geo Collaborate. It's Friday. It's October 25th. Made it to the end of the week, and uh, we still have tranquil weather through most of the country uh, right now. As a matter of fact, I have the GOES East satellite uh, that I'm looking at right now, and that is the one that's uh, geostationary orbit, uh, looking focused mainly on the central and eastern part uh, of the uh, western hemisphere. And you can see that big ocean storm. Remember we talked about that yesterday, kicking off uh, big waves in the ocean. Uh, that is uh, still spinning and it's moving up towards uh, Nova Scotia. Uh, we indicated yesterday it would be impacting Nova Scotia and indeed it is. But look through the rest of the uh, country and down in the Gulf of Mexico, no tropical activity happening. You can see that darkness there. That's the sun rising uh, through the sequence of satellite imagery. We call it the Terminator line. It's where it shows the difference between night and uh, day as the sun rises and starts to illuminate and rise on the uh, in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, but look at this, even down in the tropical Atlantic, nothing developing here, uh, just some uh, couple showers, couple thunderstorms in the southwestern Caribbean. Nothing expected to develop over the next at least uh, 72 hours. Uh, so that is great news. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to zoom in here uh, on the east and I'm going to do something. I'm going to show you the satellite, the GOES um, U satellite that was launched. It is now GOES 19. It's centered over the center part of the country right now. NOAA is going through testing of all the satellite channels and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but I want to show you, I zoomed in on uh, Maryland uh, in the mid-Atlantic. And uh, I don't have it in motion right now, but I do want to point some things out. Here's the Chesapeake Bay. You can see that. But I, I highlighted some of the land a little bit uh, just to show the colors of the trees. Look at that. You can see on the Maryland Eastern Shore, trees are starting to turn uh, beautiful colors. And then out through uh, western uh, Maryland, and this is uh, northern Virginia and West Virginia out here, uh, look at those colors of the trees. So beautiful weekend coming up for glancing at the uh, tree color, the fall foliage, even coming down through uh, I-81 down towards uh, southwestern Virginia. Uh, you can see all that color happening and uh, even into the mountains of uh, western North Carolina. Uh, the leaves are turning. So uh, we are in the midst of a drought, drought conditions. Uh, I'll show you that on GeoCollaborate in just a minute. But I first wanted to take you and use yet another satellite, the GOES West satellite, which is called GOES 17. That is operational. And I want to show you where that is with regard to the moisture. And uh, I'm going to take this uh, full screen here. I'm going to go to the moisture and, and take it full screen so you can see what's going on. Look at all that moisture. Well, here is Hurricane Christie. And uh, sure enough, after we did the update yesterday, Christie uh, intensified to a Category 5 hurricane yesterday. 160 mile per hour winds, fortunately out there in the ocean. But it is kicking up waves uh, from uh, Cabo, uh, all the way up uh, into the uh, western part of Mexico and to Southern California. Uh, but the main thing I wanted to point out in this, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. This particular satellite channel is the uh, mid-level moisture. So we're looking and see where the mid-level moisture is and where the dry air is. So this is a little pocket of dry air, uh, but mainly uh, there's quite a bit of moisture. You can see this heading up towards uh, California. Uh, this is... Uh, you know, we monitor this in the fall and the winter for atmospheric rivers that could develop uh, this particular system that's uh, swirling here, this little swirl. Uh, that's going to kick up a brief uh, atmospheric river experience for Oregon. Uh, it shouldn't be uh, too major, but yes, it's the season and we'll start to see that uh, really increase as the winter approaches. But you can see the moisture flowing out of Hurricane Christie, and that moisture is coming back in and, and, and getting into Mexico, the northern Baja, and then also into parts of Southern California. Uh, it doesn't look like anything major with any uh, flooding rains or anything, but you can see the moisture does um, come off of these storms and impacts downstream. 
so this is what it looks like on the West Coast. So you've now had a glimpse of goes east, goes central, which is not operational yet. That's goes 19 and goes west, uh, which is goes 18. Uh, but what I want to show you as well is uh, Geo Collaborate and what's going on with the forecast uh, for that hurricane. So here's Geo Collaborate. You can see the path that it took. Look at all the intensity changes uh, in the hurricane and Hurricane Christy over the last couple of days, category one, then a category two, then a category three and category four. So it was a rapid intensifier in this segment of the ocean. But look at where the warm temperatures are. When, when Christy came off of Mexico, uh, it had a lot of fuel to work with. All that red, uh, that's temperatures in the 80s, well into the 80s. But look, it's starting to, and I'll zoom in here a little bit, it's starting to encounter cooler temperatures in the Pacific. So uh, we, we will say goodbye to any Category 5 uh, status with Christie. It will not retain or regain that Category 5 status. Currently, it's back down uh, in its intensity. Uh, so it's going to continue to weaken as it gets into these much cooler temperatures. And that moisture uh, will then begin to, to flow in towards uh, Southern California and Northern Mexico. Uh, but back to uh, GeoCollaborate, this is where the storm is uh, at Category 4. And uh, I think I can see what the, this is the radius of maximum winds here for the storm. I'll zoom in on it so you can see that. This is uh, the center of the storm right here. Winds of 125 miles per hour, so it's down to a Category 3 hurricane. Uh, Hurricane Christie there. And uh, this is the radius of maximum winds. So what uh, I have displayed are the probability that tropical storm force winds will be experienced along this path. And so the probability is high, of course, that tropical storm force winds will be impacting uh, that area of the Pacific Ocean. But look, look at the cone. See, it has um, the official Hurricane Center forecast has it sort of turning west and then southwest as a depression. It just can't handle those cold waters, and uh, we like to see that so tropical storms and systems can die. Here's where Hawaii is. Uh, as far as uh, advisories go in Hawaii, we have a marine weather statement for large swells. But let me take you back here to the uh, lower 48. Uh, United States here, look how much of the nation is in drought conditions. Now, anywhere you see the dark red and the red here, uh, that's serious uh, drought. For example, like in West Virginia, uh, southeastern Ohio, this is impacting uh, not only the fall colors, a lot of leaves are falling off the trees, um, but it's uh, also impacting any sort of agriculture as well. And uh, not only, I mean, fortunately, Georgia is currently uh, not showing up in drought conditions in southeastern Georgia. There are drought conditions, uh, but this area agriculturally was just decimated uh, with Hurricane Helene making landfall uh, in the Big Bend area of Florida and then moving up into uh, Georgia. So a lot of, lot of damage there to the agricultural industry. But look at this as I move west into Arkansas, at central Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, lots of drought conditions that you see here. Uh, and that is something that looks like it's going to continue uh, for the next week at least uh, because relatively dry conditions, high pressure keeps dominating uh, the weather. Uh, in the Pacific Northwest, we even have drought conditions, uh, but that will be alleviated somewhat. Look, no drought conditions along the coast. And that's where some of the um, atmospheric river precipitation is going to come ashore, small craft advisories, even um, small craft advisories extending down uh, through all of Washington, Oregon into Northern California. I also want to show you uh, the forecast for, uh, this is the GFS model over the next several days uh, as far as the wide uh, picture is concerned. I've widened out the base map uh, just to show you what it looks like over the next couple of days. And we can just move this uh, back and uh, move them back and forth and just see how these weather systems move. Uh, it's really quite interesting. The atmosphere is a fluid. It moves just like a fluid and that's how we treat it. 
but this is the initialization of the model. And I just want you to see in the eastern United States, look at this high pressure. This high pressure here has been dominating for so long uh, and it will continue to do that. We have a frontal system that's going to come through the mid-Atlantic states uh, over the weekend, but it's going to be pretty dry. Then high pressure builds back in uh, and is really going to dominate uh, a lot of next week as well. Uh, but then as we get on into the future, we see down in the western, southwestern Caribbean, that's where it starts to uh, develop. It wants to develop some sort of tropical system, uh, but uh, the models aren't consistent and uh, the other models really aren't showing anything like the European uh, model is not showing anything developing as well. So uh, confidence is very low, uh, which means happiness is very high uh, that we won't see any tropical development down here. But again, as we've been saying over the last couple of days, we will be monitoring uh, that situation uh, as it continues and next week approaches. But uh, the GFS tends to do that um, when you have uh, certain conditions that that are conducive to developing a low. The GFS likes to develop them, uh, but uh, it's way too far out to tell. Whenever a disaster happens of great magnitude, uh, NOAA flies their King Air aircraft with um, high-res cameras on them to survey some of the damage. And you can just see a lot of this damage here uh, at this warehouse where there is a lot of track. These are tractor trailers. Um, that are, were piled up and were just washed away and collapsed uh, in this flood from Hurricane Helene. And uh, I'll put the link uh, to this in the uh, notes section or the, the, the comments section of the YouTube channel here. Uh, but you can see a lot of the erosion that was done along this back parking lot here and uh, really carved out a lot of this area. Look at all that debris uh, that's in the trees and uh, all of that. There is a lot of imagery that was taken here. This is just a little example. And I want to take you also down into uh, Florida. This is close to Punta Gorda in Florida. And you can see a lot of these um, manufactured homes um, also uh, mobile homes uh, that were that are more permanent here, uh, but they were seriously damaged. Some of them totally uh, blown away by Hurricane Milton, uh, the winds and the storm surge. So this is just uh, heartbreaking uh, to see this kind of damage. But look at this widespread damage here near Punta Gorda, and also along the along the beaches. Um, here, this is uh, on the Florida West Coast, uh, quite a bit of damage done in this location. Uh, let me just zoom out a little bit. I'll show you what this whole imagery looks like. You can see the swath of imagery that's collected uh, by the airplanes. And uh, this is down uh, actually towards Minnesota Key in, uh, on the West Coast of Florida. Minnesota Key was hit very hard uh, by Hurricane Milton. Very high storm surge as well. New inlets uh, were opened in certain areas. Uh, you can see this. Uh, so this is a brand new inlet. And uh, I don't know if that'll be closed off or it'll be kept open. Uh, it's nature's way of uh, working on these barrier islands uh, that we build so many properties on. Uh, barrier islands aren't really meant to be built on uh, because they're dynamic and they move. But um, I'll, put a, I'll put a link to uh, this uh, as well. So this is an example of some of the imagery that we use here to take a look at damage, uh, look at storm surge, storm surge predictions, validate those predictions against what happened in reality, uh, look at how numerical weather prediction models are performing. Uh, and so this is just uh, one of the tools in our toolbox uh, that we try to bring to you uh, and give you briefings. So uh, that's it for this uh, report uh, and this update. Uh, I'm Dave Jones with Storm Center Communications and Geo Collaborate. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, this is a shorter one. I hope you can get out and have a good weekend. Uh, if you have any questions, you can put them into the chat as well. I'll try to answer them over the next uh, week or so. Uh, and uh, we'll be back to you uh, likely uh, maybe with a short update tomorrow and then uh, back on Monday. So thanks so much for watching. And I hope you take care of yourself. 
And also watch out for your neighbors. Uh, they really do appreciate it. Have yourself a good weekend.